Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wayne Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of. Wow, I'm, I'm, I just completely froze. Ah, Minotaur Hotel, yes. Alright, there you go. Just popped right out of my head and then popped right back in. But yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that we're going to be moving soon. So anything y'all can donate to our Patreon would be greatly appreciated. Y'all will also get some awesome rewards out of it too, like full access to our community Discord server and access to our upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Excuse me, one of those is going to be going up very soon, y'all. It's going to be exclusive to patrons and those who are on our Discord. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right in. Alarm Chan, you were up. And let's go. All right. I just want to get back to my life. My hotel. My guests. Voices booming down the hallway. Voices bouncing down the hallways. Food and drink for all. Listening to their stories well into the night. At times, I would sneak out during the night while Master Jean-Marie slept. Outside, I'd meet up with a friend, a mathematician from the New World. And we talked on and on about infinity, about the hotel's architecture. We'd bring wine and get way too drunk and rowdy. Then the kitchen staff joined us, and later the nighttime receptionist. We'd hang out by the kitchen's back door outside, with the radio blaring from inside. We'd listen to the French songs all night long. I'd summon cigarettes for them. I didn't smoke myself, but I returned reeking of tobacco. I'd always have to take a bath before Master woke up, and in turn they'd ask Master Jean-Marie to put me in their cruise, and I'd just not do much, just enjoy their company. Spending a day with friends, talking, laughing, not a care in the world. It was life. I woke up every day knowing my existence had meaning. I had a purpose. It was all that I had. And that fiend took it away, took it away from me. It was like a dream. It was as if all my past had never happened. And I could live a fantasy of doing something good. Each and every day was a marvel. It was good and kept me from the nightmares. It didn't matter if the masters treated me well or not, because they were not my life. I had friends and a reason to be. I wasn't the Minotaur from Crete or some tortured prisoner. I was a Starian, that's all. And chances were they didn't know what got me put there in the first place. But the dream had to come to an end. It just had to. I died once, in Crete, and again when Clement kicked out my guests. All my other deaths, tortured by masters from centuries ago, were small compared to those. It isn't fair. I'm a monster. I know my crimes. What did my guests do? Nothing to deserve being kicked out of their home. We had veterans recovering from shell shock, soldiers still healing from their wounds, refugees from the fronts. We built a purpose for this place. No thanks to the gods, and that selfish fiend destroyed it. So, you know, uh, my ear itches! Alright. I'm sorry. I forget my place when I drink, Master. This won't happen again. I was awfully out of place. It's fine, though. I gave you permission to speak freely with me, didn't I? And I meant it. If you were bothering me, I'd have told you to stop already. So you can relax! I suppose I want to learn more about what you went through. I can only assume times have changed. You are not like the other Masters. I'd have been put into my place for this insolence by now. I keep thinking this will all end at any moment now, that I'll wake up back in that room. Hysterion's gaze wanders, and it seems that not a, and it seems that only now he realizes the vast change in the lounge. The hotel is alive again. But it's not a dream. You'll see. It may take a while for you to believe me, but it's true. I meant what I said. I want to be a good master to the hotel. And to you. Hysterion's eyes shift away, then back to you. The Minotaur bites his lips. The smallest sigh escapes his lips, followed by him closing his eye. The side of his face wrinkles. He's about to say something. His face goes coldly in a nearly professional solemnity, but he stops himself again. One last time, he looks at you. I am sure that Master will... His lip trembles for a moment before a smile cracks his face. His voice comes out twisted. The curve of his smile gives his words a tinge of warmth, but his words come out shaken. His voice cracks and the Minotaur enunciates slowly. There is also an undercurrent of anxiety as his eye shifts to and fro. I am glad that, of all the people there are, you are here, Master Alexios. He looks down, then back to you. Something seems to flash in front of his eyes, which takes away, which takes away his intention. He sinks in thought. It's as if he is entertaining an idea. Whatever it is that takes his mind seems hopeful. He bites his lip in one. He continues to lose himself in wanting to believe. The smile conquers his face first, and spreads out to his whole body. This time, his voice comes out firmer amidst, the, amidst his smile. Then I repeat my vows. If you are set on caring for the hotel and its guests, 
and fulfilling its man-made decision, then I will serve you out of my own will. It will be a pleasure to serve you, Master Alexios. Oh, one second, y'all. Water time. Hmm. Oh, that is some good, delicious cherry bubbly water. There's much about... There's much about... There's much about which we should... About which I would enjoy talking with you. What? Could I perhaps persuade you to enjoy a drink? Heh. <laughs> you nod and tell Asterian about your favorite drinks. The details of what you say, what you say seem to wash over Asterian. He doesn't nod or react as you describe the drink. Instead, his face is taken by a languid joy. Asterian goes behind the new lounge's counter. His hand caresses the wood, feeling its smooth, almost, sens almost sensual texture. He nods without looking at you. Now, I can assure you, I'll make something quite extraordinary. He says while caressing his beloved hotel. The Minotaur looks at the bottles on the wall. You don't recognize any of the labels, even if you can guess their contents. It would seem these are all or these are all in-house productions. Asterion, however, seems at home. His gaze wanders for only a moment before it gains a knowledge a knowledgeable tinge. He selects the necessary bottles and sets out to your drink. He starts by washing a cup. It already shone when the Minotaur picked it up from the counter, as if it had just been polished for its first use, but he insists on doing it. The water is on. There is even a fresh bar of soap near the sink. It's as if the entire place has just been tidied up by a disciplined cleaning crew. The Minotaur holds up to holds on to his smile, eyes half closed, as he runs his fingers on the glassware and all the equipment he will use. He takes his sweet time becoming acquainted with the new environment, and pouring your drink. At times he shows a bit of clumsiness, no doubt a consequence of downing an entire bottle of wine. Asterion gingerly slides the cup to you on top of a napkin. He finally looks back to your eyes, acknowledging your existence. His voice comes out with the slightest inflection of a smile. I am quite. I am not quite there yet. I will get better still. I just need some more practice to polish up back to my old self. I rarely ever managed to lounge. I'm acquainted with it, of course, but there were always better bartenders around. But I enjoy it. So soothing. The precision that goes with mixing drinks. Asterion lays his forearm on the counter and supports his weight on it. His tail swishes lazily behind him. I wasn't ever the best cook, either. I do well enough to please the master. You will see. But working in the kitchen requires agility. I could spend ten minutes chopping a single tomato, making sure all the pieces were the same size. Master Jean-Marie had me do exactly that a few times. Cooking is a very intimate thing, Master. Back when John Master Jean-Marie was alive, my shifts helping the kitchen staff would amount to at most standing in a corner, chopping a few onions per hour. Working with my hands is very relaxing, even if I'm not terribly dexterous. It may surprise you, but I only learned to cook, how to measure ingredients, read recipes, season food, just a few centuries ago. No one taught me how back in Crete, and when I was in the labyrinth, I didn't have much to cook with. Father would send food shipments. No matter. It is improper of me to unload something like that on anyone, let alone Master. Happier subjects abound. The Minotaur turns back and picks out a bottle of wine. It is different from the previous bottles you found. It has a minimalistic label and a more modern shape. Asterion gives you a quick pensive glance before opening the bottle and taking a long swig from it. What do you talk about next? Let's see, what did you do for fun? Second y'all, water time. Oh, this music is lovely. So, I'm curious. Before Master Clement came along, what did you do for fun around here? For fun? I suppose I've had a number of leisure activities over the ages. Ever since the hotel was built, at least. I didn't always have the means, but I've been an avid reader for a while. Mind you, I come from a time long, long before the printing press. I learned to read the Cretan language from my brothers while by writing and reading letters in the sand. There was no paper during those times, and stories were recited from memory. Even today, the hotel can't manifest books. We still depend on receiving shipments from the outside world. But when the master saw fit to give some, gift me some... I always enjoyed reading material. Poetry mainly, but how can I put it? I am curious about how the world outside is doing. I can never see it for myself. When I read the stories, I can imagine. I often wondered how different reality is from what I have imagined, and how much it has changed. Master Jean-Marie insisted I read The Hunchback of Notre Dame. He even showed me a few drawings of the cathedral, which he drew himself from, from memory. But I do wonder. 
What must it feel like to be there? How haunting must it be? I've never been in a ch I've never been in a church. I died long before Christ, but the guests have have told me all about them. Stained glass windows, tall, mighty pillars, the arches. One's voice echoes all the way to the entrance and the wooden benches. I wonder what Notre Dame de Paris must look like today. What it must feel like to walk alone through it, seeing all the statues of the apostles. Sometimes I'd even dream about what I was reading. That was a mercy like no other. There are very few things better than a good book. Although that hardly counts as my main pastime, since books have always been so scarce. My lyre has... My liar has been my dear friend for centuries now. Master can guess that I must be awfully rusty after all those years locked away. Still, as soon as my as soon as I've brushed up on my skills and tuned it, it would be a pleasure to play it for my master. As I said, I also enjoyed spending time with the guests. Who doesn't like being around friends? But I suppose for me it's different. It makes me feel normal. As normal as a Minotaur can be, which isn't much. I didn't always tell them about my past. The Master is entitled to know, of course, and a few of them were informed, but only those I chose. More often than not, I didn't want them to know. It only got in the way. It was already difficult enough making friends, and it opened a series of questions I'd rather not answer every day. Asterion bites his lip and sighs. There is one thing I greatly enjoyed, but it hardly counts as leisure activity, and I wouldn't want to bother Master by rambling on. Cry for information. Go on. What was it? Well, if Master truly wishes to know, a few Masters who inherited the hotel had children of their own. More often than not, they were guests themselves before acquiring the deed, so they knew me well enough. I helped with raising the children. They were a joy, each and every one of them. Even the unruly ones, I might add. It usually took a while for them to warm up to me. I know it can be very scary even for an adult, let alone a child. I can only imagine what must have gone through your mind when you saw me in the cold room. I suppose I should be thankful you did not abandon me right then and there. Anyway, the younger ones, if they happened to arrive at the hotel early enough, they were quicker to get used to me. Some would even say I was cute. They thought about having a Minotaur friend. They thought having a Minotaur friend was fun. Playing with my horns, petting me. I even give them rides on my back. I was the fun babysitter, you could say. A handful of them even grew up to become masters themselves inheriting the deed from their parents. That was a joy, serving the children I helped raise. Second y'all, water time. I was very proud of them, of who they became. The hotel had a special significance to them. It was a home like no other place could ever be. The hotel attracts those who are lost. Many of those children had no place to return to. Some had lost their countries entirely. That was a long time ago. I wonder if any of their descendants still live. Life exists only for a short while. I once knew a god. He told me that a human lifespan is like the blink of an eye to them. We're akin to pets. A father used to tell me not to grow attached to dogs, for they live short lives. That is how they see mortals. It's not the same for me. I may have died already, but I experience time like any other person would. Indeed, life exists only for a short while, but it's long enough to be enjoyed. Better not think too much about those matters. What else? I enjoy exercise. I wasn't much of a fighter at heart, but I was but I was trained for it. I was taught to always remain sharp. Speaking frankly, I cannot wait to have some exercise. Not tonight, perhaps. It's still too soon, but the day will come. What else? What else did I enjoy? Music! I played the lyre, yes, but the radio. Oh, that was very nice. Master Jean-Marie made sure I listened to all the French singers. Humanity truly is wonderful. The gods and the mythical creatures, they are set in stone and hardly ever change. They are made to be eternal. But humans change so much, and I'm glad to at least be half-human. I dearly enjoy the inventions humankind have come up with over the centuries. I can't wait to learn all about what's changed. Anything else Master would like to know? What was your life like in Crete? Life back in Crete? Now that... Now that... My memory is hazy, to say the least been so long, I'm not sure if what I remember is even correct, but Crete was quite the power back then. That was before Athens gained traction. I was raised in the palace of Knossos. It was an immense sprawling building, perhaps the greatest the world had ever seen at the time. I had many siblings. We played when I was allowed to. I couldn't leave the palace often, but I used to sneak out with my brothers to go hunting wild goats. 
I was swift-footed, my hooves helping me cross Crete's hard volcanic soil. I had a mother and a father like any other child. My mother's name was my mother's name was Pasiphae. She, in retrospect, I realized she wasn't all there. In the head, I mean. I didn't quite understand it back then, but I don't think she liked she liked seeing me. I reminded her of what she had done, and of her reputation. My adoptive father was King Minos. Assuming I wasn't misbehaving, he treated me well for the most part, because I was sacred. Then I got sent to the labyrinth. I don't remember how old I was then, maybe twelve or so. My sister, Ariadne, convinced father. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, or check out that Patreon y'all. Anyway, I love you all, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye